Welcome adventurers, I'm the Rambling Bard, and today we're going to be unboxing and sniffing some cantrip candles. Now, uh, cantrip candles is in Los Angeles, California, at least that's where these came from. Came from. Um, these are soy-based candles, and they are uh, tabletop gaming fantasy, specifically, flavored. Uh, more uh, accurately, I suppose, D&D uh, uh, themed, which is why I've been so excited to try them out. Now, what I ordered from them uh, is... So I ordered two of their sample packs, which you get to choose five of their scents. They have ten total scents, uh, however, they're currently out of their most popular, which is the, uh, I believe it's called Cosgrove Tannery. So I do not have Cosgrove Tannery because it was out of stock, but I do intend on checking that out soon. Um, however, I did get, uh, like I said, one of every other type of uh, fragrance, and I got two of uh, the one that I thought I would like the best, which is A Walk in the Woods, out of the ones they had available. So, remember to read the warning label at the bottom of your candle. First burn of a soy candle is the most important burn. Be sure to allow enough burn time for the melt pool to reach the edges of the container before extinguishing. See, there's ways to treat your candles to make sure that they've got longevity, and then also make sure that they continue to be scented. I have a bad habit of leaving them burning. I'm glad to know that. That's actually really, that's good to know. It says approximately three hours. That might, that probably depends on the candle itself, which size you have. Uh, feel free to contact us with any questions or comments about your experience. Find us on Facebook, give us a review, or check out our Instagram at Cantrip Candles. They have this wonderful logo here. <laughs> focus but uh, their logo is really nice it it looks like a, a section of a dungeon map and it probably is from something specific and around it they have uh, handcrafted in Los Angeles with ancient scents no spell slot required um, and that comes with this beautifully hand uh, this beautifully sealed and, uh, envelope here which I don't know what's in here that's it's pretty neat let me show you got an actual wax seal on there I like it. So um, I'll get to that letter here in a minute. But one other thing that I wanted to mention, we'll pull, pull out these sample packs as they're packaged. It looks like they're wrapped in simple brown paper. Uh, and it's in a bubble mailer. Some people like to know um, how they do. In, in my unboxings, I'll probably always talk about how people do shipment. So this is a jiffy padded cushioned mailer. Let me tell you something, even the mix of all of those scents together, you never like the scent of the candle aisle at, you know, your big box stores or whatever, but even all of them together, really nice. Really, really nice. So, uh, I wanted to note one thing. I ordered from them, and I think I had an error on my PayPal, to where my full shipping address didn't show up, like with my street number, um, and... I, so I ended up messaging him with my order number uh, immediately after I placed the order and said, hey, this is my order number. Oops, I forgot to, I didn't get my address in there correctly. And uh, even though I've had similar experiences at places like Etsy or other shops and stuff like that where I've tried to contact them and update it, it gets, you know, the shipping gets all the way to my local post office and then gets shipped back because it never got corrected. They corrected it and it got here in one and done. So I'm I'm really pleased with that. So let's open this this sealed letter that was sent to to me and has not been opened by anybody but me. Okay, the wax the the, <laughs> the wax is stronger than the letter itself. Printed on the inside. Okay, Cantrip Candles fragrance set. Wonderful. So it's the list of all of their fragrances. I'm gonna go ahead and read the one that I don't have yet because um, it's the one that I wanted to get, but <laughs> uh, they were sold out, uh, but I wanted to get them all. So I'm going to start with the Cosgrove, uh, Cosgrave Tannery, uh, notes leather and clove, and they write a little um, uh, description for each one here. Uh, Cosgrove, uh, Lucas Cosgrove is well known for his mastery of leather creations. I keep saying Cosgrove, Cosgrave. Lucas Cosgrave is well known for his mastery of leather creations. The boots, vests, and armor pieces that line his store walls are all highly prized by merchants and adventurers. On top of the stellar quality, he often smokes and hides with the blend of, uh, smokes the hides with a blend of cloves and spices, giving his shop a particularly pleasant aroma. Let's see how these are lined up. Undo 
our tape here. It looks like a good old brown paper bag. Nothing wrong with that. And remember, these are a sample pack, so these are tea lights. Oh, good. And they are labeled on the bottom. Golden Bakery. Now, I have a picky olfactory palette. If I say I don't like a candle, or if you see me negative re negatively react after an initial sniff, don't, especially uh, cantrip candles if you're watching this, uh, don't don't take it personally. Um, I, like I said, I have a very specific sniffer, so I will do my best to um, to judge these as, as far as the artistry of the candles and the scents, uh, and not uh, taint it with my own opinion and I will try and be very clear when I say my opinion is I do not like this style of scent or something like that um, so because I want to be honest I'm big on scents uh, and smells and I'm thinking about doing uh, specifically looking at reviews for things that the internet can't describe yet we don't have smeller net smeller vision kind of thing it adds to say this is what the smells like you have to pick up a magazine and get one of the samples I've thought about, because I love smells, and I love candles, and I love incense, and that sort of thing, I've thought about actually doing that as a, as a series, or being focusing my unboxings on that. But I really wanted to start with uh, cantrip candles, obviously, because I'm a D&D &D nerd. Uh, and a cantrip in D&D &D is a level zero spell, um, which is something that you can cast over and over and over at will, uh, and never run out of. Whereas, like, level one spells and above, uh, you have a certain number of spell slots that limit how many times you can cast those. So, we have all of our candles here. They're all in really good shape. They look like they all leveled out really nicely. There's only one that didn't look like it did, and it's Stone Moss Chapel. There we go. The Stone Moss Chapel didn't quite level out like the rest. Uh, it might just be because it didn't get uh, filled in with the extra wax, or uh, it might have gotten bumped around in shipping. It looks like it's just like it was just shrinkage from the wax all the others are nice and level uh they did a really good job uh, even for tiny little tea lights i feel like I, I really got my my money's worth now um this is not a paid advertisement i feel like i should say this uh, it was not a paid advertisement like i said i paid for this m uh, myself and when i say myself i actually mean my patrons kind of helped me pay for this um but yeah this is the receipt where you can see 16 61 i think after tax, 91 after tax uh, and that came with these five differently scented tea lights here. Or, sorry, ten differently scented tea lights. Um, my patrons, uh, on my Patreon, you can actually support me for just a dollar a month uh, and get 10% off everything I make and sell, uh, as well as get a whole bunch of really cool uh, behind-the-scenes stuff that nobody else gets to see. The patron-only feed is a really neat thing. Now... On to the candles themselves. So we'll start with my the one that I suspect will be my favorite after reading all of the descriptions before. Uh, a walk in the woods. The notes are pine and sandalwood, which is why I really like the sound of this. As twigs and branches snap under your feet, sunlight scatters through swaying pine trees above. A breeze carries with it the scent of fallen leaves and moist soil. Better keep moving. The camp is still miles ahead. Yep. can definitely smell the pine, but the sandalwood is in there just enough to keep it from being overly sharp and just like pure Christmas tree smell. Smell the other one, see if it's consistent between the two. I would imagine so, I and mean, it's probably all the same ratios. And I also feel like I smell a little bit of leather in there. Maybe I'm crazy, but... library scriptorium should have some of that so um let's see if i can find that one next all right so library scriptorium uh notes should be parchment aged wood and leather um you can walk into my workshop and pretty much spell all of that uh muffled whispers and scratching quills are heard in this hall of knowledge wooden shelves house centuries worth of history spell books bardic tales and poetry are wrapped in leather bindings and perfectly arranged shh be quiet 
the leather's a lot stronger in this one than it was in that. And some of these, I wonder if the scents like kind of co-mingle because they're in the same packages, but I imagine if that were a really big problem, they would have packaged them separately so they didn't do that. So just trying to make sure I'm not getting like any of that. That's really nice. The leather's a lot stronger, like I said, in this one. I really look forward to, to lighting these too and seeing how they feel in them. But I'm going to do it one at a time, which is going to take some longer bits to review. Uh, Black Hound Tavern. This one should be cool. Whiskey and Firewood. Oh, they're all, they all sound amazing. Uh, the Black Hound Tavern is dark and is a dark and cozy spot that's perfect for anyone who fancies a bit of a quiet. What they lack in conversation, they make up for with strong drink. The smell of barrel-aged whiskey permeates the room. The warm, crackling fireplace makes for the ideal spot to sit and enjoy one of the many stiff brews that the tavern has to offer. But whiskey is like, I don't know if you've ever been, I've been inside the, the Barrow House at Jack Daniels Distillery, and it's a lot like that. Because I don't know if you know this about whiskey, I actually mentioned that in one of my Whiskey Wood Wand videos. Um, whiskey, after it's hit the alcohol point, uh, the liquid point of becoming alcohol, after the, the grain mash and all that stuff, and it's been strained, uh, they store that in oak, usually, barrels that have been... I Make sure I'm grabbing the same one here. That's not overpowering, though, because it has that perfect campfire smell behind it, too. So it's not just straight whiskey. Straight no chaser. Ha 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 Um, anyway, uh... Is there real whiskey in that? Am I getting a little bit of a head buzz from huffing it? Because, goodness gracious. Um... But no, they would burn the insides of uh, oak barrels out and then store the liquid alcohol in that. And over time, as the, the alcohol aged and stayed in those burnt out oak barrels, that, was, that would be what gave the whiskey its final color, that nice amber, uh, that nice rich amber color. Okay, so that was Black Hound Tavern. These are all good. Uh, there's not a single one of these I don't like, I, or, or that I dislike so far. Don't like, dislike, same thing. Uh, ginger, incense, and saffron in Sanctuary. Um, hing, hinged sanctuary. Hymns ring through the halls as plumes of incense drift upwards toward the heavens. The stained glass windows cast dancing prisms on the marble. The young paladin kneels in prayer, clutching her holy symbol. The presence of the divine surrounds you. Peace. way more subtle and gentle than the other scent so far. It's almost like there's lemongrass in there. That's really nice. Ginger. Okay. Incense and saffron. I like that a lot. Gold Wheat Bakery. Okay. This one is one that could be hit or miss for me. Maybe. Yeast, bread, and flour uh, are the notes. But usually sweet baking smells aren't really my thing. But like I said, I'm going to try and be objective um, and see what happens. So, Gold Wheat Bakery, yeast, bread, and flour. Any citizen can guarantee to wake up to the wonderful smell of baked bread coming from the Gold Wheat Bakery. Rising before the sun, the bakers work to create the most crisp and fresh goods to sell. Flour sifts through the air, twinkling in the sunlight through the window. I was right in saying that this scent profile isn't normally one that I like. There's something about it that makes me want to give it a chance, and I don't know why. Yeast, bread, and flour. It's not sickly sweet. It's just the tiniest hint of sweet. But it smells more... like flour. That'll be interesting to see how it burns. Once, because 
candle scents change once the fire hits them and once the fire has been burning them. They it expands the scent into what it's supposed to really be because you're getting not just the scented oils that are effervescing off the top of your wax there, but also the wax burning with it and all that good stuff. So that's gold wheat's a accurately at the very best for me questionable. However, well constructed in the sense that it didn't punch me out of my chair. Um, a lot of the, the stuff that falls in this scent profile for me is the kind of thing that I take the cap off it at the store or whatever and sniff it. It just, I get a head rush from how, and an instant headache from how just intense it is. And that wasn't that bad. So I would, those other candles, you couldn't pay me to burn them. I would be willing to burn that one, even though it's not my preference. So, so far, they're hitting a home run. Six, what have we tried? Five of the six. Or five of the nine cents that I have, yeah. Pretty good percentage. All right, Sweet Fig Farmhouse. That's another challenging thing to do with a, as a candle maker. You, you get too many sweet things, and it's gonna be that punch in the nose, it's gonna be overpowering, so. Um, the nice thing about them being this small is I'm not getting any hints of, you know, by waving it around as long as I'm not purposefully inhaling close to the things, by waving it around in my face is I have to wait until I get it under my nose. Um, all right, so the notes in this one say citrus, fig, and berry. Citrus, I think, will help balance the berry out. Berry can, is really easy to overdo, and fig, I don't know, we'll see. Just on the edge of town sits a small farmhouse. The property is surrounded by three acres of fig trees and garden patches. The property is magically charmed to deter any thieves or wandering wildlife, but the owners are more than happy to offer some fruits in exchange for a day's work. If you're lucky, you'll get to try their famous fig and berry jam. Oh, that's really nice. That's got a muskiness that keeps the berry and the fig from becoming too much. And then the citrus is in there to keep it bright. I like that one a lot. That's five yeses and one maybe so far out of ones that I would definitely burn. Like definitely yeses. Okay. Where'd it go? Adventurer's Bounty. Here we are. Notes, amber, leather, and copper. Amber's a hit or miss too, depending on who's making the scent. So, for me anyway. Um, the stone door slides open to reveal what you've spent years looking for. Piles of jewels, coins, and treasures fill the chamber. As the sweat cools on your brow and your aching muscles begin to relax, you realize that this fortune is enough to purchase anything you desire. Now, to figure out how to carry it. That reminds me of like going to stock show and rodeo. Amber, leather, and copper. Yeah. That's cool. The copper and the leather together really, really sells like you're walking around in a saddle store because you can smell the two. How do you, co how do you scent copper? That's, that's, that's clever. That's pretty, that's pretty incredible. All right. So the last two, two that I am incredibly excited about. Dungeon Depths and Stone Moss Chapel. I like dark, musky, deep scents. Um, strong things, but at the same time, not super sweet. Again, I got a picky, picky sniffer. So we'll see. Um, Dungeon Depths is the first one I grabbed. Notes of dust. <laughs> I can still smell that last one. <laughs> I sniffed deeply. It's a dungeon depth. Dust, stone, and water. Miles of winding tunnels and passageways form a network of danger and mystery. Torches smolder and flicker against the damp cavern walls as you get closer to your destination. Or perhaps your doom. And an eerie wind seems to blow from behind you, slowly urging you further and further into the darkness. Oh, that's interesting. 
already I can tell you it goes in the yes pile. I think gold wheat's probably the only maybe. But that's okay. Whoops. Surprisingly clean for dungeon depths. Clean smelling. Dust, stone, water. <laughs> yeah. I can definitely see that. Smell that, as it were. Alright, last but not least. Stone, moss, chapel. Moss, soil, and stone. Pretty straightforward. Uh, before the town was founded, a band of clerics built a small chapel for their rituals and prayers. The passage of time has left it wild and overgrown, but there's still beauty to it. The babbling stream that trickles nearby provides a serene place to gather one's thoughts. Mind the slippery stones, though. Wow. That's really cool. That one, like... Dirt is clean dirt. I don't know how that works. The moss is pungent, but not overpowering. Stone. How did they get the scent of stone? How does that work? But it does! I don't get it. Okay, so maybe no spell slots needed on our end, but clearly you guys are using up some high-level magic to craft this stuff. I am thoroughly impressed. Literally only one of them was a question mark for me. And like I said, I have a very picky sniffer. Ask my wife. I, I don't like a lot of different scents, but I love all of these. Gold wheat's still question mark, and I reserve final judgment until after I've burned them all. And maybe I'll add a little sting at the end of this video or something after I've finally tried them, or I'll, I'll do a follow-up video. That's probably more likely, because that's nine different scents that I need to go through uh, in order to actually burn them all and letting the room dissipate it takes about three hours for it to burn up to that point but i will tell you i'm going to start with the one that i've got two of and the one that's my favorite which is walk in the woods oh yes absolutely okay so well done absolutely cantrip candles at least for the out of the bag or off the shelf sniff test i give you guys a 9.5 out of 10 um the only thing i would change is you should send it in a box you should totally send it in instead of an envelope. However, boxes are more expensive. You're getting started. I totally understand it. Um, you know, that 9.5 just doesn't feel fair. This is exactly the experience I wanted out of it. Um, I would, I'm, I'm going to give Cantrip Candles a solid 10 out of 10. Uh, to quote Game Grumps, 10 out of 10. Um, it's just absolutely beautiful from the wax sealed uh, letter to give you the guide of the whole, every single scent that you've got to uh, the 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 just the the sense being as amazing and mind blowing as they are, and that's really what it comes down to. So, uh, definitely, I would definitely recommend. Again, not a paid advertisement by them. I'm just thoroughly impressed by their work. Cantrip Candles. Dot com. They are good folks. He responded immediately, fixed my address thing, and sent me some wonderful, wonderful candles. I am excited to burn them in the like using way <laughs> remember adventures uh life is a series of choices between love and fear choose love